Tonight on Hip on the Spot News. A new update brings multi crew for the MI8 Hip. The path to that logistical overhaul brings more features. The Strike Eagle Autopilot holds our course to victory. And a great discovery for single player missions has been uncovered. This and more on How I Play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the latest updates in DCS World. So we got a new update for DCS World Open Beta. Remember, you need to use the Open Beta version of DCS in order to access the new features. Always a good reminder for those of you who are not aware of this. Also another reminder is that we are giving away another DCS module. More information later in this video. So what we got? Well, like always, let's take a look. Most important changes in this update are the new warehouse management function for the scripting engine. This is basically an inventory script for warehouses that tracks local supplies in air bases like fuel, weapons and aircraft. Another step forward for that logistical overhaul of this ES world, preparing for more features and that dynamic campaign. Nice. We also got new features for the F10 map. We can now pick coordinates like in the mission editor using the left alt and clicking on the left mouse button and the ability to show the airdrome data window regardless of the F10 view options. Torpedoes got a splash effect and AI units and helicopters behaviors got a few fixes and improvements. Moving on, the MI8 gets multi-crew with corresponding changes for multi-crew voice chat support and cargo support. Four crew positions are now available including cockpit crew plus side gunner. The rear gunner got fixed and can be mounted without cargo half doors. The MI24 behind gets a new campaign, the border and Petrovich has improved his altitude control. Yes, they trained me not to yank the collective. Uh, apparently I was too brutal with it. <laughs> For the Apache, we got a replacement of the quick start manual with updates to the current state of the helicopter in early access, including numerous revisions and improvements. They added the CPG AI target store command and his interface always respects the color scheme of the weapon's wheel. They fixed multiple things like the release of control when both pilots got killed. Cockpit will be released only after ejection of the whole crew. There's no more flame effect on the APU startups, I always wonder about that and the windshield wiper keybinds now work correctly. Nice! One fix was listed for the combined arms, more precisely the coordinates display in binocular mode being clipped got fixed. Alright. The A10C2 got wheel chocks on cold start, make sure you remember to remove them. We got a few fixes for the Viper, like the RWR new contact doesn't pulse on subsequent detection of same emissions, or the ACM STT track being lost again under specific circumstances. Do not lose my track, please, thank you. They also fixed alignment status calculation. The Harrier by Rasbam got a special option for the MPCD video gain and contrast. The Mirage F1 by Aegis Engineering got an increase for the ILS glide path sensitivity in the artificial horizon indicator plus a few fixes, one of them being a bug in which the rudder trim usually started deflecting to the left, sometimes to the right, when in hot ground start. For the F14 Tomcat by Hitblur, they added the seed tasking for the mission editor. Partially fixed pilot not being killable, this is work in progress as eliminating a player spawn as Rio will take out the pilot instead, both in single player and multiplayer. Ah, good to know. They also fixed certain shader parameters in the F-14B cockpit that were causing very dark panels. Spooky. And now it's time for the F-15E Strike Eagle by Razbam. Brakes now automatically get applied when the gear handle is up and the weight is off the wheels, to stop the main wheels from spinning. Interesting. They added the course mode or CRS and Tacan autopilot steer mode enabled. We got the laser code panels for the VSO with the ability to control laser guided bomb codes from the VSO seat. They reduced the lights displayed through NVG filters. 
They made improvements to basic autopilot and altitude hold feedback control and inverted RC, MPD, MPCD screen selection plus more improvements for the external module and LODs. We got a new livery, always welcome. But wait, there is more. When hearing like in helmet option is enabled, we got a reduced ECS sound. This change was based on SME's inputs. Nice. Also, the external ground power will now provide power to radios, gear lights, flap lights and master mode lights. They improve yaw stability modeling to better match reference data and reduce unrealistic yaw oscillation in some cases. They corrected an issue with heights and inertia not properly being applied during ground rearming. Oh, and no more jittering when in multi crew and the VSO and pilots start to have spasm or twitch like there is no tomorrow. I wonder what caused that. Do you know? Moving on, the GFS light now stays on during the entire engine sequence instead of only when ready for engagement. Speed brakes will now retract when hydraulic power is no longer available. Makes sense. CAS no longer uses INS as source of some kinematic data to avoid issues with unresponsiveness CAS behavior without the INS being aligned. TACAN will now initialize into proper initial state and no longer automatically adjust channel when going to air-to-air -air mode with proper initiation on UFC regardless of the power state. GFS single bottle will now recharge properly after engine start and flight and GFS low caution is gone and bingo fuel warning will no longer play immediately during fuel bit. It will play when the needle goes below the set bingo value. Now I gotta say, that is quite a list of additions and improvements for the module and Rasbam is hard at work delivering everything, bit by bit improving our experience in this wonderful bird. I gotta say, the more I fly the Strike Eagle, the more I fall in love with this module. It's so much fun and I cannot wait to test everything that changed, for the autopilot, tack and mode and all the improvements that were made. Keep up the good work and salutations to the entire team at Rasbam. So these are the most important changes that came with the latest open beta update for DCS World. As always, I link the entire change log in the video description. Moving on, the hype gets bigger with the recently released video by Hitblur. We got a few sequences with the F4E Phantom, looking good as always but for everyone out there waiting and wishing for more information on the Eurofighter, well yes, we got more glimpses of the module that no doubt raised even more questions. We need to remember quality and perfection takes time. Good things come for those who wait. Patience is key here. But no doubt, the hype is real. In other news, Ground Pounder Sims made the first missions of all of their campaign available for free. Amazing move by the mission developer, this is in order to provide a good experience for possible buyers. Links can be found in their Discord and on the ED forums and of course, I included this information in the video description as well. Sticking with campaigns in mind, Sim Sedlow introduced a new feature, rollout for all its inherent resolved missions. It is normal to speed up time in a long campaign, but many times you get to miss radio messages and get confused on what happens next. Well, it's a simple command to trigger normal time when important audio messages or things are happening in the campaign. He released a video explaining how this works, I strongly advise you give it a look if interested. And now, let's talk about our next giveaway. This time we are preparing to ship the one and only F-14 Tomcat by Hitblur for one of our viewers. All you need to do in order to participate is to be subscribed to our channel and comment on all the videos we publish starting from now. Our Discord members have an extra entry in the giveaway thread and our Patreon special pilot and co-pilot classes get an automatically entry as well. Once a winner is chosen, you will hear it in one of our videos from my voice only. If you already own the F-14 Tomcat, do not worry, you will be able to choose a different desire module from DCS World, Standalone or Steam, or choose to give your prize to somebody else, no problem. More information in the video description. A channel-wide announcement, I am happy to report that our Hip Talk Show's podcasts are now available on Spotify for all of our Patreon members. Make sure you check out your benefits. 
And that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Remember to check our sponsor, VR Rock, for your VR blue light protection and prescription lenses. Many thanks to our patrons that support our channel. Thanks for your continuous support. It means a lot to me. And for everyone, remember to leave us a like if you find our video informative and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.